The iceberg chart is a phenomenon that became popular to create starting last year. It is a kind of image or video that, taking the idea from the expression tip of the iceberg, talks about trivia, mysteries, theories and easter eggs from a specific game, series or any sort of media. The deeper it gets, the more obscure the entries will get. Occasionally, they will also get darker. This phenomenon started with the now legendary Super Mario 64 iceberg, so it was logical that other Nintendo related icebergs would resurface over time. And Donkey Kong, a series very closely related to the Mario series, would be no exception. Except, this iceberg is not about the Donkey Kong video games, it's about the Donkey Kong Country cartoon. This show is one that has gained a lot of infamy over the years, mostly due to aspects such as the animation, the songs and certain scenes that have achieved meme status over the years. I personally don't think it's a show as bad as others will say, even though I recognize that it's not exactly perfect either. In my case, it's a guilty pleasure, or at least until the animation style changed to look even uglier and the plots became dumber, in my opinion. Anyways, the show does have a good number of interesting tidbits, odd elements about the continuity and unexpected links to the games it's based on, enough to fill an entire iceberg chart with them. Big shoutouts to the creator of this iceberg image, Miro Floydyke, who also helped me with some of the entries that I wasn't aware of. I must also comment that this iceberg isn't too particularly dark or serious, something that you may have noticed due to the source that I am covering. With that all said, let's dive in. DKC GBC commercial that uses DKC cartoon assets. What the name implies? an old commercial for the Game Boy Color port of Donkey Kong Country that used modified models of Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong and the Kremlings from the show's second season. Rambi was also featured, who was absent from the actual cartoon. La Planète de Donkey Kong, or DKTV, a French variety show that mixed animation with live action using the same models and voice actors from the cartoon. It is partially lost and was never translated, unlike the show itself. Speaking of Donkey Kong interacting with real people, there is this animation test of DK made for the cartoon, where he talks to someone from the staff behind the series. Here, he has a completely feminine voice and talks about the Rugrats. Tommy. Uh, yeah, from the Rugrats. Oh, Tommy from the Rugrats. Now, he would be a human being kind of a character, right? It's so funny. Feature length and you may slap it once. Two memes from the cartoon with perverted intentions. Feature length simply takes DK's face from the Legend of the Crystal Coconut DVD alongside the text feature length cropped from the same DVD. This further expanded, no pun intended, the popular expand dong meme that took DK's cropped faces and captioned them with modified texts from the box art of his games. You May Slap It Once simply captions a scene from the episode Kong for a Day where DK's ass was quite the focus. Toys based on the cartoon and the Japanese card game. The DKC cartoon was stupidly popular in Japan, where it got much more merchandising than anywhere else. Multiple toy sets based on the cartoon were made, as well as a Japanese card game that also included elements from DK64, the most recent Donkey Kong game at the time. We'll go back to DK64 later though. Ailstorm's Pirate's Corn Cover Ailstorm is a rock band that makes songs with a pirate theme. In their album, The Curse of the Crystal Coconut, already a reference to Donkey Kong, they covered the scurvy song from the episode Booty and the Beast. They also covered Lazy Town's You Are a Pirate. I recommend you check them out, they are total bangers. The Crystal Coconut and Scientist Cranky in Donkey Kong 64 DK64 was released around the end of the Donkey Kong cartoon's lifespan, and features a couple of references to it, 
with a crystal coconut becoming a collectible item, although being very nerfed compared to how it was in the original show. Cranky Kong was also a scientist specialized in potion making, something that was also the case in the cartoon. Not mentioned on the iceberg, but Tiny Kong's top also resembles the one that Dixie wears in the cartoon. Could this mean that Red actually watched the show in order to get inspiration for DK's first 3D adventure? Oh my god DK, watch out! A meme that takes the song Nobody's Hero from the episode Kong for a Day and changes it to this. Nothing too special about this entry, aside from inspiring similar memes, but with other characters. Pilot Oddities Being the first episode of the cartoon, Bad Her Day has a few differences from the rest of the show. For example, King K. Rool's name is pronounced like I just did, but in the rest of the series it is pronounced as Kurul. Who's claws? That's my Miss Kaylee Fowler, Lizard King K. Rule. The letters stand for the Kurul to Crystal Coconut and Back Missile. Also, Crusher is not as dumb as he is in later episodes, and Cranky is much less, well, cranky. Thermidor and Krabby. Thermidor is Dixie's pet lobster, who is mentioned in the episode Clumps and Slumps but doesn't actually appear in the show. Dixie also mentions having a crab named Krabby in Get a Life, Don't Save One. Here, Krabby, Krabby. Here, Krabby. I'm looking for my pet crab, Dits. I can't find him anywhere. She really likes having crustaceans as pets. May he rot in hell. Something that Captain Scurvy says in the episode The Legend of the Crystal Coconut. A very out of place quote that even includes a curse word. After Chunky Kong's One Hell of a Guy and this, the DK series sure loves to say hell. The DKC story in Super Mario Kun. The 22nd and 23rd volumes of the long running manga Super Mario Kun feature side stories centered around Donkey Kong that are heavily inspired by the cartoon, with elements from it such as the wish granting Crystal Coconut, Candy Kong's design, and even Blaster Kong makes an appearance. Playerism of Lionel Richie and Daft Punk. This entry refers to two Donkey Kong Country cartoon songs that are suspiciously similar to songs by real-life musicians. The song I Haven't Got a Friend in the World from the episode Clumps and Slumps is very similar to Lionel Richie's Hello. Meanwhile, the song I'm a Metalhead from the episode The Big Switcheroo is very similar to Daft Punk's Around the World. There is even a mashup on YouTube for the latter that puts the two songs together. I would play them for comparison's sake, but I would probably get a copyright strike for that. The Japanese DKC dub removing songs. The DKC cartoon is known for having two songs in every episode, but that wasn't the case in one particular version of the show. The Japanese dub reduced the song count from two to just one per episode, meaning that there are certain songs that were never translated into Japanese. One particular big loss was Nobody's Hero. Sterling Jarvis Donkey Kong's voice actor, but only during the songs. Normally he's voiced by Richard Yearwood, and the only song where DK sings with his normal voice is Our Love is Stronger Than a Golden Banana. How can such a pretty thing as this make things really go amiss? All I want is candy skin. What's with all the worry? Can't you see I'm in a hurry? It's a perfect gift for our anniversary. I see bananas when I look in your eyes. I'd shower you with coconut cream pies. Jarvis's other notable roles include him singing the main theme for Sabu Mafu 
and providing Rat's singing voice in OKKO. OK the 2015 DVD release. This just refers to the official DVD release of the series, which includes all 26 episodes. Before that, there were only VHS tapes and limited Japanese releases. The art on these DVDs is also very strange, so maybe this iceberg entry refers to that. Tropical Freeze Marketing References In the Switch port of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, since Funky Kong became playable, his old role as a shopkeeper was given to a new character called Tox, who would occasionally tell Funky, given the old banana slama dude, when exiting the shop, an obvious reference to Donkey Kong's iconic line in the cartoon. The marketing part actually comes from Donkey Kong Country Returns. This image was posted on social media to promote the 3DS version of the game, which includes nods to Blaster Kong and Eddie the Mean Old Yeti. Rei Ayanami a character from Neon Genesis Evangelion, voiced by... Oh boy, I'm going to butcher this. Uh, Megumi Ayashibara, who also voices Diddy Kong in the Japanese dub of the DKC cartoon. It's a common joke to point this out, mostly when people joke about the Donkey Kong cartoon being the best anime ever. Diddy also sings a song about a robot at one point. Another curious case of same voice actor with Diddy is that his English voice actor Andrew Saviston also voices Yoshi in the Super Mario World cartoon. Lord Harry The Donkey Kong cartoon is not very well liked in DK Vine, a popular Donkey Kong Country fan forum. Apparently, they hate this cartoon so much that they refuse to even refer to it as a Donkey Kong Country cartoon, and instead call it Lord Harry. This nickname apparently comes from the fact that someone from the British House of Lords worked on this show, although there is no evidence to support this claim. Scurvy's Great Great Grandpappy Supposedly a pirate that stole the crystal coconut and brought it to the island of Congo Bongo, hiding it inside the eye of Inca Dinkadu. He never appears in the show proper and is only mentioned by Scurvy himself and other characters, such as Cranky. The cartoon represents every level from DKC1. Let's see, there is a jungle, a mine with minecarts, a beach resort, a snowy mountain, a factory, a cave, and a pirate ship. They are not one to one and there are a few differences, like the ship not belonging to K. Rule, but I can see that they did take a lot of inspiration from the game in order to make the show's environments. Finnish DKC Cartoon Dub A rare dub of the show that used to be on YouTube, but it was deleted. And on a similar note, the Dutch DKC Cartoon Dub. Another strange dub, possibly here because the VHS tapes that were released for it either featured the box art of the first game, 2D art in a different style, or screenshots of the show. They remind me of those Sonic X bootleg DVDs that featured characters that were never in the show, Funky Kong stoner references? <laughs> I mean, I mean, he has always given me like stoner vibes given his Jamaican accent, but I don't remember any specific jokes about that. Funky Kong stoner references. <laughs> Clump's Betrayal. I originally thought this referred to the episode Clump's Slums, where Clump befriends the Kongs only for him to betray them at the end by stealing the crystal coconut because he's just too faithful to K. Rule even after being fired. However, this is a more obscure reference, being the part in the ending of the Congo Bongo Festival of Lights, where Clump talks about joining Scurvy. This could have been an interesting way of changing up the formula, but it's never brought up again. Feel the Power is a public domain track. This one originally referred to how Feel the Power, from the episode The Day the Island Stood Still, is actually a song from a music library called Technotown, with the song in question being called Club Happy.
but after the creator of this iceberg investigated some more, turns out that a lot of the music in the show, composed by Tim Foy, was actually featured in music libraries, although I haven't found information about what came first, if it was the show or the music. Examples do not only include instrumental versions of some songs, I'm a swinging this thing from coast to coast. You can't see what we see here. A crocodile, a superior species. Your donkey cock and his shoes, DC. But even some of the instrumental score. For the lion car. Good diversionary tactics, Majesty. Over there. Donkey Kong Country, the annotated series, a parody riff of the Donkey Kong Country cartoon which was part of Anoverse, a channel that took episodes from infamous cartoons of the 80s and 90s and covered the footage with annotations, pointing out errors, making jokes, having the characters say other things that they are not saying in the actual show. With YouTube removing annotations, these episodes are lost in their original form but some were saved with some people recording the screen while playing the video. Donkey Kong Country Worth A series of YouTube poops based on the Donkey Kong Country cartoon, created by Kamek TV. Unfortunately, some of the episodes of it are lost, probably due to copyright issues. Cranky's favorite thing about the holidays What's your favorite part of the holiday, Cranky? The truce between lizards and apes. Seems relatively harmless, right? Well, this entry is not actually about what happens in the show. This entry refers to a picture taken from the annotated series, which featured incorrect subtitles that were so hilarious that some people believed them to be true. Kind of like Seymour Skinner's Pathetic, or Mr. Krabs's Please Tell Me That Your Nose. And what did Cranky say? Or rather, not say? Yeah, same dude, same. Bluster Kong's Amiibo There is a fan-made Bluster Kong Amiibo. What can I say? It looks great, especially since it's clearly a modified DK Amiibo, but this limitation doesn't make it look worse or anything. Bluster is Swanky There is a theory that says that Swanky Kong, from Donkey Kong Country 2, is Bluster Kong given both are rich Kongs that look like Donkey Kong. Others simply say that Bluster was inspired by Swanky, the same way that Captain Scurvy is inspired by the enemy Cannon, from that very same game. One of Donkey Kong's alts in Smash was inspired by Eddie the Mean Old Yeti. Starting with Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Donkey Kong has this white alt that some people compare to Eddie. Doesn't help that Sakurai called it Yeti Kong, back when it was announced in the Smash Bros. Dojo. Given the cartoon's popularity in Japan, could this mean that Sakurai has actually watched it and gave DK an alt based on Eddie? Just thinking about that makes me laugh. The inconsistent continuity of The Legend of the Crystal Coconut movie The Legend of the Crystal Coconut was a direct-to-VHS movie that was based on the Donkey Kong Country cartoon. Except... it wasn't. It was just the episode The Legend of the Crystal Coconut, spliced together with Bugga Boogie, Booty and the Beast, and Apenasia, to make it feel like a movie. The order of the episodes featured does not correspond to the order when they originally aired, making the film quite confusing. One particular example of this is how the song Pirate Scorn is featured in between The Legend of the Crystal Coconut in order to introduce Scurvy and the Pirates rather than having it during Booty and the Beast, which is actually the last episode of this compilation film, even though it was Scurvy's first episode. Bluster's mother, the supposed owner of Bluster's Battle Works. She never appears in person in the show, but she is mentioned by Bluster from time to time. Thanks to your girlfriend, Candy, and her day off, mother made me take over the morning shift. Someone working on the cartoon wanted it represented in Smash 4. 
I have seen meme support for characters such as Blastercon and Metalhead, or even people unironically wanting Benedict Campbell to voice King K. Rool, but I don't think any of the actual animators expressed their opinions on the matter. The DKC cartoon is a prequel to the games. Placing the cartoon somewhere in the Donkey Kong timeline is something that I have seen plenty of times within Donkey Kong fans, at least the ones who do not consider it non-canon. I assume people say it's a prequel because King K. Rool and his minions are comedic pushovers in the show, while in the games, they are actually dangerous enemies. Maybe that could also explain why Captain K. Rool exists, with K. Rool taking over Scurvy's pirate crew after something happened to him. We do not see him in any of the games after all. The Lost European Spanish Dub Oh boy, this is mine. Most people are familiar with the Latin American Spanish dub of the series, easily found on YouTube, but there was a separate dub made in Spain that is incredibly rare now, with only one episode having survived thanks to the internet. No puedo presentarme viéndome como un gran simio peludo. Pero eres un gran simio peludo, Donkey, así que no te preocupes por ello, sé tú mismo. No puedo ir con esta pinta, parezco un simio grande y peludo. Es que eres un simio grande y peludo, Donkey. Tienes que ser tú mismo, no te preocupes tanto. As funny as the Latin American dub is, I also have a soft spot for the dub made in my country. This dub also did not last as long as the easily found Latin American one, as when the show aired its second season here in Spain, they just aired that dub instead. Inca Dingadu is a hoax. Think about it. According to the story told by Cranky, Scurvy's great-great-grandpappy stole the crystal coconut from somewhere else and hid it inside Inca Dinkadu's eye, where DK found it and became the future ruler of Congo Bongo. Could this mean that Inca Dinkadu was just some random totem that obtained powers and sentience after getting in contact with the crystal coconut? It could also explain why he never responded to Donkey Kong's question about the magic artifact and simply responded with vague proverbs. The existence of the Big Bog Monster In the episode Bugaboogie, a monster found in the Forbidden Forest, named the Big Bog Monster, is mentioned a few times across the episode, but it's always seen to be someone else pretending to be the monster to give someone a spook, like did it to DK. Be scared. <laughs> it was me, you goof! <laughs> Except at the end of the episode, where the Kremlins hear a loud roar that does not come from any of the Kongs. Get me out of here! Was this fake monster actually real all along? Clump and Crasha voice actor confusion debate. There was a bit of confusion between who voiced who between the two crocs. For the longest time, Clump was thought to be voiced by Len Carlson and Crasha was thought to be voiced by Adrian Truss but it's actually the other way around. Great Aunt Grouchy Another unseen family member, this time being Cranky's great aunt, who wrote a spellbook to undo the curse of Congo Bongo. She also speaks to Cranky on the phone, meaning that she's still alive. There's a spell to cancel the curse? In your book? I said goodbye! You gotta love Great Aunt Grouchy. If Cranky's an old ape and she's his great aunt, how old is she? Ape Fusius, another implied character, this time being Kung Fu's master. Out of all of the implied characters, he's easily the most throwaway line of them all, only being mentioned during a song. I've been taught by Ape Fusius, who says the mind must be sharp as a wisdom tooth. Two baby Kongs. A very odd example of a reused character model. In the episode Ape Fu Young, Donkey Kong accidentally drinks a youth potion that was created by Cranky and turns into a baby that Diddy Kong needs to take care of. But in the episode Baby Kong Blues, a character named Baby Kong appears, who uses the same model but is meant to be a completely different individual, and not just Donkey Kong as a baby. Terry Saltzman hates Donkey Kong, a running gag from the previously mentioned annotated series. It refers to the writer Terry Saltzman, 
always writing episodes where Donkey Kong gets abused and disliked by the people he loves. The biggest examples are Hooray for Holy Kong Bongo, where DK is banished from the island after being accused of stealing the crystal coconut, and Message in a Bottle Show, where everyone in the island is sad because Donkey Kong is not leaving the island to be with the Federation of Future Rulers. Then why did I use up my best material on this shit? Rejected episode scripts with racist and sexist jokes. According to the late Erika Strobel, a recurring writer for the show, before she stepped in, there were scripts written for the show that were rejected by Nelvana for including racist and sexist jokes. She said, quote, Media Lab owned the property, obtained from Nintendo, and had 13 episodes written that were horrendous, with racist and sexist jokes and just so bad for a kiddie show. They fired the original writers and asked Nelvana to repair what had been done. Since almost 10 storyboards were already conceived from the 10 horrible scripts, Nelvana was forced to use them, to save some money. So new episodes were written based around the drawings and storyboards. No easy task. I really wish those scripts and storyboards were archived out of morbid curiosity, just to see how bad it could have been, and also to see what episodes of the current show were the ones that were reworked. The headband song Depressive Aura. This entry is clearly inspired by the wet dry world Negative Aura from the Super Mario 64 iceberg, but I do believe that there is some meat to this particular entry. It's not here just for the meme. Headbands, also known as DK is a Head or Head Games, is the weirdest song in the whole show, as rather than being a song, it's just Cranky and the others making head puns at the expense of Donkey Kong, who is now just a robotic head. Music plays in the background and they sometimes dance. I should just quit while I'm a head? <laughs> it's incredibly uncanny because of that. There should be a song here, but there is not. I also assume that an entire song making fun of DK while he cannot do anything could be triggering for people who were bullied in a similar way. The models still exist somewhere. Come on, Nelvana, release them! Imagine all the memes people could do with them! We could have these models in Smash! Erika Strobel's Lost Scripts Erika Strobel, who I mentioned before, got in contact with the girlfriend of one of the members of Anovers, sharing some scripts that were never materialized into episodes. Due to Erika's passing, the person who got these scripts does not feel comfortable sharing them in their entirety, but she was kind enough to share the plots of these lost DKC cartoon episodes. I will read her message now. I'm not releasing them anymore in good conscience out of respect for her, but synopsis I can do. One was about secrets and a kind of a screwy game of telephone. Another one involved Scurvy and K. Rule. And yet another involved magic, with grown-up Didi and one time DK grew giant. I don't remember, I'll have to check again. Didi was going to reuse Kung Fu's model and I remember you losing your seat at that. As interesting as this topic may be, please. Do not harass this person into releasing the scripts. To me, this information is more than enough, especially considering the circumstances. Erika's passing is a very touchy subject for the annotated series and the Donkey Kong Country cartoon fans, so I really hope you respect the wishes of Renee here. And that is all for the iceberg video. Yes, I know that it's something that everyone has been doing recently, but this particular chart is one that I really doubt it would ever be covered by anyone aside from me and maybe Miro himself. So I wanted to give it a shot. I also felt this video was appropriate to make given this year is Donkey Kong's 40th anniversary and the fact that I have made a couple of videos related to this goofy cartoon in the past. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in future projects.